Ocean State Clean Cities. Tell us more about what she does. Great. Thank you. Um, to be upfront, I am not a fan of PowerPoint at all. And I'm not Steve Wallenberg either. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> <Game> preview. <laughs> There are no surprises anymore. Yay! <laughs> so that's me. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background about Ocean State Clean Cities. In fact, Channing, we kind of thought about an order, but I really have to give you the mission first. Um, Ocean State Clean Cities is one of 87 coalitions nationwide with the mission to um, reduce petroleum in the transportation sector. Um, in our, in our, here in our neck of the woods, it is a partnership between the University of Rhode Island and a nonprofit organization. I'm proud to say that in our audience are many of the board members and many stakeholders here tonight, as well as many of the URI fellow, fellows that work in my office. I want to give special attention to Andrew, who is behind the camera. He is my intern. He is funded by Argonne National Laboratory. Um, he's been an incredible resource and he is going to help us move forward in a lot of positive ways. So, I'll give you a little bit more background about um, the Clean Cities program. It is out of the Department of Energy Vehicle Technology program. It has a mission, like I said, to reduce petroleum in the transportation sector. As I think it's been pretty obvious from all of the speakers, petroleum reduction falls into pretty much three categories. Replacing petroleum with alternative fuels, reducing um, the use of petroleum through advanced technologies and fuel economy measures, and eliminating petroleum use through idle reduction, VMT reductions. Um, so that's kind of the broad scale portfolio of petroleum reduction um, categories. Here is actually the Clean Cities portfolio of technologies. Um, the cornerstone of Clean Cities and its mission is the promotion of alternative fuels. And I am not going to drill down too far into any um, of those fuels today. But, and you're going, obviously you've heard a lot about biodiesel today, you're going to hear a lot about electricity. The other um, four fuels are the other official classified alternative fuels under the Energy Policy Act of 1992, which I'll talk about in a minute. Fuel blends, so every, you know that every, um, gasoline gallon you put in your tank is actually 10% ethanol already. That's um, stand, you know, standard. As well as some in many um, regions across the country, every gallon of diesel you use has a percentage of a small percentage of biodiesel in it. Uh, fuel economy measures, hybrids, and idle reduction. Those are as well as emerging technologies. I think this slide might be a little old. Emerging technologies are, have become incor incorporated into the Clean Cities portfolio of activities. Um, we've talked a little bit about idle reduction. Molly did a great job. Um, my big line is an idling car gets zero miles per gallon. So, you know, you got, as far as driver behavior is concerned, if, if it's not cold, if it's not hot, and you're sitting in your car, there's no reason that it needs to be on. Um, there's other idle reduction technologies. There's onboard pack, battery packs, auxiliary power units. There's a, lo there's a lot of um, options. Hybrids, I think we've talked a lot about them, and fuel economy measures, which I am going to drill down a little bit on tonight. I thought it was a, a really poignant thing to talk about. I know we've talked about CAFE standards some, so I'm going to kind of you know, skim through some of those slides. A little bit more about Clean Cities. I am, I cannot claim to know everything, that is for sure, but I can claim to be a resource to a conduit to give you every resource we have out there. Oh, it's already been five minutes. I can't believe it. I'm barely touching my slides. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> so you could ask me a question tonight, and I, I would certainly admit I don't know the answer, but I know how to get the answer. Um, I've mentioned the Energy Policy Act of 1992, um, which is really it, it, it's what is the Federal Fleet requirements that you know of that. Federal fleets have to lead by example and purchase alternative fuel vehicles. Um, there's, there's also um, our, many states are, fall under that EPAC standard as well as fuel providers. 
Energy Independence and Security Act, that created the Renewable Fuel Standard. That's one of the big policy drivers across um, the country. Is it says here, uh, 36 billion gallons of um, fuel, of renewable fuel by 2022. 21 billion are going to be um, advanced in cellulosic biofuels as well as biomass based diesel. And the goal is to have 9% 9, 9 greenhouse gas um, reduction. That's the goal. Um, we've talked a lot about that. Um, regional and local initiatives, the low carbon fuel standard. So California already adapted a low carbon fuel standard and Rhode Island is um, one of the Reggie states that have signed on to at least explore the options of a low carbon fuel standard, which really does take into that well to wheel analysis I was everybody's been talking about. The, the whole life cycle cost of, you know, what pathways work best. It, Renewability doesn't necessarily always mean sustainability, and this is supposed to be, a, and it is, a more sustainable approach. Um, I've been asked to talk a little bit about what's happening on a local level, on a state level. Well, I'm proud to say that the Advanced Biofuels Commission um, was established to help support the low carbon fuel standard. It, it passed um, the state legislature, and Oh, they're going to be looking, exploring ways to, to help meet that low carbon fuel standard using biofuels. Um, another thing that, Rhode Island, that Ocean State Clean Cities is involved in, we are going to be part of a, um, a plug-in planning, a regional plug-in planning award um, from New York, New York State um, Energy, Energy Resource Development Authority um, through the tra Transportation Climate Initiative. That is a regional plan. Again, the Reggie States are all going to be making a plan together what, for e electric vehicle deployment, for infrastructure needs, um, and that is what we are going to be engaging in on a local level. Um, somebody mentioned 51% oh, of ve your household um, emissions are from vehicles. You can see the whole pie chart here. I picked up a few um, just interesting tidbits from fueleconomy.gov. I'm going to give you, oh, God, two minutes. All right. <laughs> I want to go into the resources real quick. Um, the Alternative Fuel and Data, AFDC, Alternative Fuel Data Center, um, is a comprehensive Department of Energy sponsored website that has tons and tons of information. If you need more information, um, I really encourage you to contact me. I can help guide you through that website. There is a database of publications. There's an alternative fuel locator map. There is, you can do queries on state legislation or federal legislation. Um, holy cow, they just put in a widget for, uh, what is it called, Andrew? It's the, it's the cost, it's a vehicle cost calculator. So you can put in any alternative fuel, whatever car you drive, put in your driver patterns and see what your impact is. Okay, so. Really, and, 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 I, and there's a technical response team that will give you all the information you need, and I've got one minute, and honestly, I really encourage any of you to follow up with me, and my email is, I will, you can ask anybody who writes me, I am quick on the emails. I, I'll always get back to you. Any questions, any resources you need about alternative fuels or petroleum reduction measures, please come to me. Thank you.